Well, hi. Happy weekend to you. I pray that this message finds you all well. Uh, just wanted to check in here, and keep you plugged in to what's happening in and through the life of St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Uh, my name is Jeremy Knight, and I get to serve as the pastor here at St. Paul's, and um, I'm so grateful to be able to spend a little, little time with you and let you know what's going on. Uh, first, just we had an incredible, uh, busy and fruitful and beautiful week here last week as we observed Holy Week together. Uh, which culminated with Resurrection Sunday, with Easter, with lots of celebration here with both our sunrise service and our 10.30 a.m. service. Uh, we saw so many people, and we're so grateful for that. If you were one of those folks that, uh, that checked us out, that visited us, uh, we were so very blessed by your presence and pray that you'll continue to journey with us in a little while. I'll talk at the end of the video about worship, about what uh, you may can look forward to and when you come back and, and visit with us over the next several weeks. But first, let's talk a little bit about um, some things happening in April that we want to make sure you're aware of. We've now turned the page, and, and for us, that, that means particular things have changed, so we want to make sure you're aware of or to remind you of some things. The first is this. Um, many of you are aware we collect what we call an everyday offering uh, each month, and that everyday offering changes what we're asking you to, uh, to bring and to donate. And so last month, it was hygiene products, and we had the list of those particular hygiene products that, that were in need at some of our shelters here in the Ocala area uh, for people that are experiencing homelessness um, or those that are transitioning um, from particular stages of life and, and working to, to get healthy and get clean and sober. And so we've been collecting those, and those were actually going to be delivered today as I record this. Uh, Doug and Rena Langloy came and picked those up, and they're delivering them this afternoon. We're so grateful for them. Um, but we, we shift our everyday offering in April to a very particular need. And this is a tradition that's been going on here before I arrived. Um, and I, I find, I don't want to find humor in it, but it is, uh, it is an interesting one. And it's this. Um, we, during this month, with the leadership of uh, our United Women in Faith, our, our women's group, um, we prepare for Undy Sunday. And usually this was just one Sunday where they collected underwear, um, you know, new packaged underwear for people in need, because if we're honest, sometimes those needs can get overlooked. We think about other articles of clothing, we think about food, but sometimes those undergarments are uh, as much of a need as, as well. And so what we've done over the last two years is expand that from just one Sunday to the whole month of April. And so um, we're going to be doing that. So when you are out shopping, just pick up an extra pack of underwear. Uh, whether it be for a child, whether it be for an adult, or anywhere in between, uh, we get those to the people in our community, certain shelters and certain um, places that, um, that have the need of those particular items. And so uh, I look forward to uh, your help with that, and I'm so grateful for our women's group, the United Women of Faith, who help lead that charge each and every year. Um, April also means that before you know it, summer will be here. And we start our, well, preparations have already started, um, but we're about to be really kicked up a notch when it comes to Vacation Bible School, which will happen in June here at St. Paul's. And so if you have not signed up your child to be a part of VBS, if you have a grandchild that you want to come, nieces, nephews, kids in the neighborhood that uh, you want to reach out to to make sure they have an opportunity to be at St. Paul's, um, now's the time to go ahead and do that because... Um, we already have, I think, over 60, maybe 70 people signed up, and um, we don't have as many. Um, there's not an endless amount of resources and people here, so we have to kind of cap that. And so before you know it, we're going to be full and have a waiting list, so I don't want you to miss out. Um, for more information about how to sign up, about the dates and the schedule, go to spocala.org slash VBS, and all that information can be found there. Uh, I want you to go ahead and get that taken care of, and uh, we look forward to it. Um, having those children with us this summer. Um, the new month also means that uh, we'll be observing family worship this Sunday. Uh, family worship means two things, and they're both beautiful. Um, one is that we want our children uh, to be with us. We want them in worship. We want them to experience worship. Um, it is okay that they wiggle, and it is okay that they sometimes have an outburst and that you can hear them. That's part of what it means to be church together. So specifically, our children older than nursery age, um, they're going to be with us the entire worship service um, because we're going to end worship coming to the Lord's table. And that's the second beautiful thing of 
family worship as we all come to the Lord's table to observe Holy Communion. And so we look forward to that this week and look forward to having you uh, as a part of that beautiful, beautiful expression of grace that we partake in each and every month. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about worship and what we're going to be doing over the next several weeks. Um, I've kind of, in my mind, titled um, the series uh, for the for the series of Easter, kind of after Easter Sunday leading up into our next season, as alignment. What does it mean to align ourselves uh, to the power, to the beauty, to the light of resurrection? What does it mean now that we profess a faith in God who is a God of resurrection, who shows once and for all we understand um, what God is about, not just by coming into the world um, by the person, uh, the incarnation of Jesus Christ, but letting Christ's life be both example um, and atonement for us and letting that life be resurrected to show God's ultimate love and power. And so what does that mean for us? How do we align ourselves with that reality? And so we're going to be looking at some scriptures over the next several weeks, asking some questions of them and some questions of ourselves about what does it mean for us to get in line? What does it mean for us to be assimilated, to be kind of molded into, to be grafted into this resurrection that we proclaim is at the heart of God's story in our world? So I hope you'll come. Um, we'll look at a pretty particular, uh, really interesting passage um, coming from 1 John this week uh, that is uh, really asked the question of what does it mean to let the light, the light of resurrection, the power of resurrection, um, to let it really permeate who we are and what does that do in us? What does it direct us to? What does it expose in us? And um, and you will probably be interested to find out what that is. And it is uh, important work, important work, um, because things aren't always uh, roses and daffodils. They're not always super easy because resurrection power does something in us, and it helps us be our very best self. And so uh, I'm excited about that. I hope you'll come uh, to be with us. If you can't make it in person here at 1030, please check us out online. Uh, both our Facebook page and our YouTube channel will be live streaming there, and we look forward to what the Lord has in store for us as we seek to be Easter people as we seek to live in the light of love and to bring goodness and grace to our neighbors and to our communities, uh, to our nation and to our world. That's what we're about here, and we're so grateful to be on the journey with you. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Can't wait to see you soon.